It has been confirmed that IU is indeed Purdue's little brother. What, what is happening? Welcome back to the best part of your week, the Westfield Sports Show. This week we cover all the sports action that has happened since the last time we talked, give you a playoff preview for the NFL, and set our predictions for the college football playoff national championship. Do not forget about college basketball too, because we need to talk about it. All right, a lot to unpack from the guys' basketball team. Aiden, what do you want to start with? Let's start with the Tuesday's win over Mount Vernon. Although Mount Vernon attempted 26 threes, only nine went in. They found offense early, but couldn't get it going in the second half as we outscored them 41 to 27 in that time. We were the exact opposite. We struggled in the first quarter, but after that we found a groove and dropped the gear and disappeared. Trey Buchanan was our top performer in this one, dropping 25 points with two rebounds and two assists. That was by far the best performance this year by anyone on the team. Friday saw similar success as we walloped Yorktown 59 to 47. I love that game for so many reasons. We were down seven and a half, but another strong 40 point second half led us to win again. Both Caleb Wise and Trey Buchanan had three point and ones, which is unique, but I'm also more intrigued by Alex Romack's stat line. 16 points, 12 rebounds, and three assists, just seven away from a triple double. You know, I find it odd that Alex Romack in his illustrious high school career has never had a triple double. Uh, anyways, the guy lost to Carmel after that. To keep it short and sweet, we didn't have what it took in the second half and got beat. I just don't like talking about Carmel. Can we just move on? The girls basketball team gave a good old fashioned defensive clinic to Bishop Chittard on Wednesday, winning 41 to 13. If I didn't know any better, I would have thought that was a football score. Well, I, I just said that it was a girls basketball game. I know, but I was just, you know. No, 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 it, it doesn't make sense. I literally just said. Despite what he thinks it is, it was a whooping for sure. Let me guess, another game where Ellie Kelleher was the leading scorer. Uh, no, actually, Lindsey Van Dyke led the team with 13 points, going five for seven from the field. Wait, what? Yeah, you know, true story, LVD is just too good. Granted, second on that list was Ellie Kelleher, but. This week they play a plethora of games, both are away, Friday at HSC and Saturday at Indian Creek. Hey, here's a new one. Our gymnastics team, yes everyone, gymnastics beat Columbus North 100.05 to 90.65. That's pretty awesome. This past week, the wrestling team competed at Zionsville and at the Paul Logan Memorial Invite, and this week host Carmel on the 11th and compete at the HCC Tourney on the 14th. Swim and Dive also competed at Zionsville this past week and competed at their HCC Tourney on Saturday. This week they host Garen today at 6 p.m. Now on to out of school topics. For once and for all, Evan, who is winning the Natty? Um, I honestly think it's Georgia. TCU is good, but I don't think it'll be really close. You know, um, Max Duggan's a good quarterback, and they have some good depth um, in you know, the receiver core, the running back position, and their defense is really good as well, but I just can't see them beating that stacked Georgia team. Yeah, I would say the safe bet here are the Georgia Bulldogs, but I wouldn't be surprised if TCU comes away with, with that win. Everybody thought they were gonna get curb stomped by Michigan. They put 51 points up on one of the best defenses in the nation, so don't be shocked if TCU steals this one. Safe bet Georgia, but I'm baking on the Horned Frogs. I'll go TCU on this one. I've been told, and you know who you are, that Purdue sucks at college basketball. Uh, is that true, Aiden? Uh, no. Uh, and, and why is that? Because uh, they beat Ohio State and Penn State. Well, you're dang right about that. And why is IU worse than Purdue? They have more losses and are all around a worse team, I guess. This, this right here is nice. What he's trying to get at is Purdue hasn't lost since you've seen us. Actually, they've had two solid wins against some solid teams and IU lost to not just Iowa, but Northwestern as well. I could hear you say that for hours and hours on hand and it'll probably be my ringtone for a while, actually. Can I just like win, please? Nope, ED for player of the year and boiler up. And oh, by the way, 16 ranked teams have lost in the last week, which is bizarre. This is the craziest college basketball season in a long time. Maybe ever. And by the way, shout out to hometown hero, Braden Smith. He's doing some truly incredible stuff up in West Lafayette this year, so yeah. Shout out Trace Jackson. Nope, 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 nope. ED is better, 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 ED is better. 
Finally, after a long and wacky season, the NFL playoffs are here. Here's our preview of the playoffs. The one seeds are the Eagles and the Chiefs. There's not a shock there. Both teams have been virtually unstoppable this year. Except for when the Chiefs got beat by the Colts and the Eagles got beat by the Commanders. You know, that's a fair point. Uh, in the AFC, the Dolphins clinched with a win over the Jets yesterday, and they will be playing at the Buffalo Bills. I really like the Bills in this one. Yep, I'm gonna take the Bills on this one. The Dolphins have just been too inconsistent towards the end of the season, in my opinion. The Bills have struck struck gold throughout the whole season. They got DeMar Hanlon's prayers on their side. Yes. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna easily take the Bills in this matchup. Next, the Ravens travel to Cincinnati to play Joe Shiesty and the Bengals. You know, I'm gonna just throw this on because they actually did win yesterday. It was a pretty good win at that as well. Yeah. Um, with his weapons, I cannot see Joe Burrow and Houday Nation losing. Yeah, I, I had a feeling this Grizzly would make another appearance. Uh, yeah, I would, I'm gonna say the Bengals again. That offense is just so overpowered, so much power, firepower on that team. And Bengals, yeah, easily taking this one as well. This will not be the last time this jersey makes an appearance this year. I will tell you that Hopefully. much. Uh, finally, for the AFC, Duval County hosts Justin Herbert and the LA Chargers. This is going to be the most competitive game for sure. And Austin Eckler will run over the Jags defense and bring the Chargers a playoff W. You know, this, this Jaguars offense has looked pretty scary over the past few weeks. Trevor Lawrence has been playing the best football of his NFL career so far. Um, Travis Etienne is playing great. Christian Kirk and Zay Jones are getting open. The problem is that defense, and I think that's what's going to hinder the Jags in this one. Um, I'm going to go Chargers, but it could really go both ways. I like both of them in this one. I feel that as well, and for the NFC, I'm going to go rapid fire. I'm going to say the 49ers, Vikings, and Cowboys all get wins. I'm going to say the 49ers do take the win over the Seahawks. Unfortunately, I love Geno Smith's uh, story this year so far, but I think it comes to an end in that one. Cowboys. Um, I think they will uh, get the win over the Bucks. The Buccaneers have had such a down year this year. They're eight and nine on the year. Um, Tom Brady has looked kind of mid, one of his worst years in his career so far. They shouldn't be. But you know, else. it's Tom Brady in the playoffs. You can never bet against him. I will. But I will this time with the Cowboys. The Cowboys have looked very inconsistent. Don't get me wrong, but I would say Cowboys. But it could go both ways. And then the Vikings Giants. I'm gonna say the Giants get it. Uh, get the job done there in Minneapolis. I think Minnesota does take that, or uh, New York, <laughs> New York does take that one. I think the Giants take that one. The Vikings have been way too inconsistent. The first half against the Colts game was probably the worst football I think I've ever seen in my life. Stats don't look good for the Vikings. I'm gonna take the Giants on one. I think Brian Dable's gonna take it home for New York. I think Justin Jefferson's just gonna absolutely run on that. Giant defense and secondary. Uh, one last thing before I sign us off. At some point in the Friday show of Rock TV, there will be a new segment that you won't want to miss. Let's just say Aiden and I tested each other on Westfield Sports Trivia, and it's quite a doozy. All right, do I get to sign us off? No, uh, I get to stay breezy and go rocks. <laughs>